Um, so this is, this is actually where the printed out, we actually deviated from the printed out um, agenda some because it was printed and we made changes late Friday and Monday, yesterday. Um, so this is uh, what I was saying earlier, kind of following along that, that, uh, that progression thing I was talking about earlier, where you run bro, and then you look at the logs, and then you, um, uh, you, you really more deeply analyze the logs, and you kind of get into bro cut and things like that. And then all of a sudden, you start noticing in the notice log, maybe, that you, uh, bro's actually detecting a few things. And I'm not going to overstate it. It doesn't detect a whole lot. I mean, you're not going to run it. And it's not going to be like snort, and you, know, you have a 10 meg trace file, and you're going to have 1,000 alerts or anything. It's not going to happen uh, right now. Um, so, so we're, because it's all sort of uh, still building this um, base for us to work from. So continuing with that, that learning style, we actually have, I'm sort of going to talk about the notice framework from a higher conceptual level. Hopefully, I can keep it to about 15 minutes. Um, so I'll talk about that for a little bit. And then we have, <coughs> we don't know if this is going to work. We're trying it. It's sort of a self-guided <clears throat> exercise. But we have enough people that can help you that hopefully everyone has lots of questions. I mean, that's kind of the goal, is because we don't know the right way to teach this yet. And this is what we're trying this time. Um, it, it sh the link to the exercises should be somewhere. I'll, I guess maybe I'll put it up on the slide or something when I'm done. So anyway, the notice framework. Notices in Bro are, are really similar to like alerts from something you may be more familiar with. But uh, frequently, there's a lot more context to them. And there's a lot more, um, I, don't, I don't know, you can sort of do things with them without leaving Bro. Like within Bro, they actually, you can do something with them and, and they, you know, they can have consequences and you can take actions due to them and you can email yourself, which is, yay, Bro sends email. Um, so it's, it's really like alerts, more flexible. There's two parts to it, actually. What we're actually covering now is, Sorry, the, the, I, I believe, and John, is this right? The exercise covers handling notices. Or is there raising notices in there? No. OK. I'm going to talk about both of these, but, but uh, handling notices is what we're actually going to be doing in the exercise, because that's progressing along the, the bro learning path, where you, you know, look at logs, and then eventually you notice that there's something happening. And so you want to tell yourself that it happened. Um, but I'll, I'll actually talk about both here. But it's really like in, some, in, in other tools, you may have that, that part where you raise a notice. You, raise, you, throw, you generate an alert or something. But they don't frequently have the other side of that, where you're like, well, you know, <laughs> there was an attack against a web server or something. <sighs> But it only matters if the web server is one of my web servers. Or like, it only matters if it's in this subnet. It doesn't matter if it's outside of that. I don't really care. You can log it. That's fine. But I don't want to know about it. So that's kind of where a lot of the distinction comes from, is that this is, it's again, it's that part where there's putting something in, and then there's how you use it, um, which has grown to be sort of pervasive across many of the frameworks in Bro, because it needs to have that extension. Um, so they're, they're both relatively easy. The notice framework was, again, one of those things that Robin, I think, probably told me 15 times not to rewrite. And I rewrote it. Um, <laughs> so when you raise notices, and this is, this is you know, generating the alert, essentially, in, in Burroughs' <coughs> lingua. You define the notice type. So first, you have to sort of narrow down, like, what is it you're talking about? And I'm, I'm, hopefully, I'm going to hit on some of the theory parts that I tried to apply to the notice framework with the 2.0 release. But you have to like, really stop and think about what you're doing. You don't just, well, this happened, and you just generated a notice. You probably want to kind of stop. Uh, the, the best example I have of this right now is there is HTTP um, uh, SQL injection detection on HTTP. There's a script for it. But if you really think about it, there's two things there. You might care about host hosts that are attacking, 
And you also separately and independently may care about hosts that are being attacked. It's actually two separate things. Uh, originally, the way I had done it was I had them both as one. I was like, ah, there's an SQL injection attack. But it, it turns out that that's murky. It, it's, it's really murky as to like, what do I do with this? Do, when there's an attack, do I email myself? Who was attacking? Was it, it, it just gets really complicated. But if you start breaking it down, you can say, if I get a thousand, and this is done with the metrics framework, and you can look at the script. If anyone's interested in it, I can point you to the right script, and you can see how it's implemented. But you can say, if there are 50 things that look like SQL injection requests in five minutes from this host, that means that host is attacking. If there are 50 attacks, thing requests that look like attacks going to this host in five minutes, that means that host is being attacked. Because there's really the separate notion of what if someone has a botnet and each host sends one request, or they have like a big proxy network, and each host sends one request, you need to protect your assets. And you can't protect your assets if you're saying, well, you know, I mean, it wasn't being attacked because we only saw one attack from a thousand hosts. That's not an attack. And it's like, well, that's not an attack until someone does it. But uh, so it's really separating these notions kind of helps you tease this out where you can independently say, well, I saw this host attacking, or I saw this host <coughs> being attacked. And this isn't, in the beta at least, this isn't pervasive through all the notices that we generate right now. But we're going to be going back through the notices and trying to sort of apply this, that same rigor to making sure we're doing things well to, uh, to all the notices where, um, where you're really trying to be correct in what you're saying. You're, you're not just saying something. You're, just, you're trying to say something that's meaningful. And um, so we're, we're trying to do that. And that's, that's what I was really trying to get at. Uh, wow, that second bullet point's terrible. <laughs> <That's>, wow. <laughs> but um, ignore that, because that's really embarrassing. I wrote that this morning. Um, <laughs> So there, there's, <laughs> there, there's even something in the notice framework where uh, th there used to be stuff in, in the notice framework where you would say, you know, uh, I, don't tell me multiple times. Because sometimes you like, want to send yourself an email. And this happened to me at OSU multiple times. And I made the other team members upset because their mailbox had 60,000 emails in it in the period of an hour. And everyone that runs Bro 1.5 and sends email with it knows what I'm talking about. I saw you kind of smile, Jim. I saw you smile a little bit. I'm sure you've had that. <laughs> um, the problem with it, the way it was, and it was something I kind of identified a long time ago and been working on, uh, was that it, it puts this responsibility of understanding what like, this intrinsically duplicate notice is on the user. But you as a user can't deeply enough understand the problem space for a notice to just say, oh, well, this is what a duplicate of this notice would be. You can't just do that, because it, the problem is probably deeper than you understand, or, or at least initially. Um, so there's actually, a, uh, there's actually a way where, a, as a person generating a notice, and, and sorry, this is a little off topic for the upcoming exercise, but as a person generating a notice, the responsibility is actually placed on the person generating the notice for the notice framework itself to say, oh, that's an intrinsically duplicate notice and suppress it. And um, the example that, that I can think of offhand is uh, there is a notice in one of the scripts in the policy directory. And again, I can point it out if someone's interested in looking at it, that uh, it, I need, I need to phrase this right, it, it'll identify uh, like an expired certificate. But the problem is, is that you can actually, on a single host and port, you can have multiple server certificates. Because there was an extension added to SSL a few years ago, this server name, or Matthias reminded me earlier, the SNI extension. It's the server name indicator. And it's so that like, uh, you can do virtual hosting with SSL. So the server will return multiple certificates for validation, or, or in validation and encryption. The, the problem is, 
is that if we left the responsibility to the users for understanding an intrinsically duplicate notice, this, this uh, server has an expired certificate, the user might say, well, all right, tell me once a day if the, the, uh, the server and the server port you know, have an expired certificate. That might be what you're, what you, you, what, how you define something as intrinsically similar. Except that that's not right. Because you could have multiple certificates there. And you don't want to suppress different certificates that are failing. You want to know about other certificates on the same host that are also failing. So really, the responsibility of identifying that is placed on the person generating the notice. So they actually have to indicate to the notice framework. And it's really an internal thing. As a user handling the notices, what you're doing here, you don't, you don't even worry about it. It's just kind of taken care of for you. But you can disable it if you need to, if you want to get these duplicates. So this is really the, and sorry about that. That was sort of an aside. Uh, this is really the important part, because this is you know, how, oh, crap, I should have examples. But the examples are coming up, I think, in, in the exercises. When you're handling notices, everything is done through this notice policy set, the second bullet point. Uh, it's, it's sort of this uh, thing of, I guess, I don't know how to de describe it correctly. It uses predicates, which is an unfortunately computer science-y term, but it is what it is. And it's basically things that return true or false. So what you actually get is the full expressiveness of the language to, to represent something. And that could say, that could be, you know, I only want to email about this if the server, the responder ho the responding host, is in my local subnets or something like that. So then you can say, you know, only actually email this if it's in the responding subnets. But we actually have this shortcut thing above. And what that does is you say, Whenever this notice happens, I don't really care. Um, the SQL injection, uh, the one that indicates that a host is being attacked with SQL injection attacks, uh, you might say, you know, for that notice type that, I, that was defined, just email me whenever that one fires. And it's going to suppress duplicates and whatever, so you don't have to worry about that. But uh, you can say just one line. You don't have to define all the, the code and really, really do it complicated. It's just very easy. So it's like. That's usually the progression. And someone will start there, identify how they have to sort of back off from the whole notice, where they say, well, I only care if it's the local host or something like that. Um, and, and there's even sort of this further idea. So you're attaching these actions. You can say, this notice, it needs the, the email action attached to it. Or it needs the alarm action attached to it. And what the alarm action is, and I'm probably not exactly qualified to talk about it because I've never used it. But <laughs> what, what it is actually is it basically dumps out this separate log file and it does tricks so that every rotation interval, so an hour by default, it's going to take up all these things that you marked as alarms and it's going to e package them all up in one email and send them to you. Uh, it's different because that stuff you're saying is kind of important, but not like critical. I need to know it right at like the moment that it happens, kind of important. Um, so con continuing that, though, if you have your own local actions, this is one way. And I, I haven't looked through the, the, through the uh, exercise completely. And I hope the exercise touches on it some, but oh, it probably doesn't, does it? But anyway, sorry. Uh, you can actually create your own actions. So if you need to do integration with some external system, you can actually create your actions and do all this stuff and say, if it's a local host, you know, if the responder is local and it wasn't this some kind of attack, you can actually say, call my action that you know, uh, put something into squeal. There you go. <laughs> Hopefully, over time, we'll get more of these integrations out of the box, so they're not so so much effort on an individual's part. Um, I think that was my last slide, because I really didn't want to talk about this a whole happened. Um, I didn't want to talk about this a whole lot. So the general idea, and I said I was going to put a link up, but I don't know the link. What, does everyone have the, the link to the, the agenda on the internet? 
on their computer? The, it, sh it should be the exercise three, the, ha the handling notices exercise. Okay. All right. Now, I will try and 